finally. It's been sitting here, whining. Just meowing at me. I didn't know why. There's nothing wrong with this food. Sometimes you have to go up to the food bowl and just scoop it forward. Just want you to pull it forward for her. That's not what's turbo. You're making a lot of noise back there, baby. What's all the noise? That's a transmitter. That's not for you. Looking outside at the the table. It's I gotta get that cleaned up. Talked about it in last week's vlogs. All my side quests. That's what that is. And I can see right here that Queen Palm got blown over last night. Had some storms. Knocked a few things over. There's the office. Y'all haven't seen this place in a while. It's kind of, it's not really messy. Got wires and things to put away. But I don't know why I was about to say it's my hey baby. Hi. I was getting ready to go do some laundry and do some non youtube -y things and then she started whining. The pet started asking for attention, so here I am giving them their attention. And uh, is this is it, is it ridiculous? Listen, the only TV that would fit in this room had to be small to go inside of here, but I wanted a certain size TV to be able to use as a playback monitor for the YouTube videos that would run 4K and the right frame rate so I could, you know, watch things back and make sure that they look accurate to what people might be seeing on the TV. And so I just figured, well, I just get a TV that fits in here. It's like 39, 40 inches, something like that, and put it on a four foot long bracket. Yep, yep, it works. Is there a plan for this week? I don't think so. I don't think that there's any plan for this week. Camera, it's still broken. Said in the last video, let's wait for my sister to get in town. We're gonna go to the camera store together. She loves the camera shop. When we're there, I will see if they have another one of these. Hopefully they do. I'm having trouble finding them, which is surprising. Well, I can find them, just not for a reasonable price. They just released a G Master too. So this is a G Master. They just released a new one. So the price on this one should have gone down, but it hasn't. Still very expensive, like $2,000. Why? Stop it. Plinkin, look at you. The sun came out. You're all lit up and looking gorgeous. You're always looking glorious. You're such a pretty pumpkin. Always looking nice. Such a good pumpkin. Uh, I never finished that thought. No plan this week. The, there will be a video. Don't know what's going to happen in it. I think cleaning up a table might be kind of boring, so... Not gonna leave that all up to y'all. But yeah, we'll figure something out. Need to go set that palm tree up. Probably run some errands, go to a nursery at some point. Bring you along for that. It really wasn't that windy. I know I say that every single time, but it really wasn't. Everything else is fine. So I don't know what the heck that thing's problem was. But I just noticed. Look at how much this thing's grown. Well, that lighting. That's better. Okay. Queen palm turning into a beast. The thing's opened up four fronds in like the last two months. I think it only has one of the originals left that it came back to me with from the greenhouse. That was hard to say. Don't know why. New leaf starting to pop out of the Colocasia here. This is the Waikiki. Last week's video. That's weird for me to say because this, what I'm filming right now, won't be out for a couple of weeks. But everything will be current by the time this video is out. So here's the, the Waikiki. So this got put into a self-watering container pulled from one that I put in the ground in that video and it's that's good you want to see signs of new growth so that means it's doing okay one thing I've been wondering is if this no-no is ready for a repot and I think that it is look at that leaf isn't that an awesome leaf with all the color in there it's like vibrant reds and pinks inside the lines and it's not moving so before it was really wobbly and it just kind of wanted to blow over but it's not doing that anymore I shouldn't be talking about any of this when I need to set that palm tree up and get this table cleaned off. Mm -hmm. There, I don't, you didn't miss anything. It wasn't very exciting. Just picked a plant up and set it where it needed to, well, I didn't set it anywhere, just cleaned it up. Just saw something exciting. I was over here watering the aeroids, the gloriosums and things that hate me. Mostly just that warocanum and the luxuriant and thurium. But look at what's going on over here. You see it? Look at it. Look at it, nice and close, exciting. This is the Purpurata Shell Pink Hot Pink. I said shell because Alpinia Shell Ginger. Yeah, but it's called Hot Pink. So it's have a beautiful flower on it. And I've been saying throughout the last few garden tours that I'm gonna be so bummed if it doesn't give me some blooms this year. And uh, that's, it's going to, right, right in there. A bud right there, do any of the others? This one has a bud too. So there's still hope. It is, today is August, august september 7th so by the time this video comes out 
I would think enough time will pass for it to have hopefully pushed out and opened all the way. The Alpinias can be pretty slow to get going sometimes, so I can't guarantee that. But hopefully by the end of this video, no matter what happens, whether anything gardening related ends up going on in this video, at least hopefully there will be something to look at here. I'm so excited about that. Finally, finally, I just watered it. I don't, it's been kind of a diva lately. It's that time of year the air is more dry. When the air is dry, the freckles is a bit of a diva. Where'd Turbo go? Oh, there he is. You're right behind me. Of course you are. You're always behind me. All right, come on, Turbs. Come on. Yeah, good boy. Good boy, Turbo. Banana canna. Am I anywhere close? No, no, not even close. But it was entertaining. <laughs> it's a philodendron. Were you thinking elephant ear? No, those are big. Those are like like elephant ears. Well, what That's are ba long. bananas? Are pretty big too. Yeah, but I thought they were the longer kind. Oh, so when you look at this, you see just like a long strap leaf. That's all I'm seeing. Yeah. Which? What else? What am I missing? Like the stem. Oh, that thing. That's a philodendron thing. Well, that's why I thought maybe you thought of elephant ear, because, like, if you look at that, doesn't that kind of look like the ear of an elephant? Yeah, it's too skinny. It is. Good eye. That much. Yeah. You're just a little. Mm -hmm. I'm filming, by the I way. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to leave all that in there. Okay. Yeah. Banter's fun. Family. Met Greenscape. <laughs> no transition from whatever was happening in the clip before this. <laughs> because who has time for all that nonsense? They have a lot of good looking house plants. Look at these bilatees. Look how full this is. Great looking plants. I like a bilate. I almost bought one at the Aeroid show and didn't because I forgot. So maybe I'll get one now. I don't know. Lots of Sansevierias. This one. It's got two in there. Two for one. That's great. Also got a lot of ficus going on over here. Video about how I'm not acceptable. ready for this. <laughs> But I'm tempted to go ahead and get this because it's cute and because I know it'll piss people off, which I'm fine with because y'all started putting out Halloween stuff in July. I may as well start putting up Christmas decorations. What are you doing? What are you doing? You getting squeaky clean? We need to go look at the plants. Things were not chaotic at the nursery, but I wasn't able to film much. I'm trying to make sure that there's time with the pets because I haven't been so great about giving time with the animals in like the last several videos. So there's some pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. Stop licking your pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. Now I've got your attention. You want a cookie party? You want a cookie party? No, she'd rather clean herself. That's fine. You go ahead and get clean. Hey, Turbs. Hey, doing, baby? You know, you could come in here if you wanted to, Turbo. It's probably better that he doesn't because he's going to disturb Pumpkin. There we go. You're going to roll over? you going to do it? Pumpkin, roll over. Pumpkin. <laughs> She's almost doing it. Pumpkin, roll over. He's driving Turbo crazy. Do you see him in the background? He's like, I know how to roll over. I can do that. Yeah, well, that's not going to happen. All right. Well, hey, Turbs. Hey, you doing, Pee-Pee? Wait, 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 where'd she go? Down here, Pumpkin. Hello. Where's my Pumpkin. She was just right here. Y'all just saw that. Except what y'all just saw was from two weeks ago. Almost two weeks ago. Not quite. So here's what happened. Life, family in town. 13 days have passed since I started this video. And there's just, it's, it's been a lot. Yes, that is all laundry. Got new mattresses. And somehow that turned into this entire spiral of wanting to clean out my chest of drawers and some stuff from my closet and then it's over here because this is what's left to be won. None of that matters. A lot of things did happen that are vlog worthy and they're all, I have it all right here, but I don't know how to, I didn't talk that much. I really didn't, there wasn't, it's just a lot of clips. A lot of clips that are going to seem nonsensical. So I figured, you know what could be fun? We could just scoot on through here and I'll obviously put it up on the screen for everybody so it looks nicer. There's a solid about three minutes here of me trying to get Pumpkin to roll over. So we'll just we need to skip over that. Let's get caught up. We'll go through what's gone over the last couple weeks and then look at the new plants. There are plenty of new plants to look at. Here, for starters, went over to my little sister's house with my emergency googly eyes and had a very good time putting googly eyes on basically everything in her house. I have to pop by once a week to let their puppy out while it's crate training. And since my older sister was in town, may as well have fun TPing and googly eyeing with my older sister in town. Makes sense. Team up against the little sister and 
have some fun. Also toss an inflatable mannequin in the shower just to add a little startle factor when she comes home. Ordered that just for the special occasion. Then saw a praying mantis on mimosa tree. Showed that to my sister. Didn't want to focus, but there it is. Praying mantis. They're fine. Right, here's where things really kick into plant mode. Went out to a place called Eckert's over in Illinois, just over the river from St. Louis. This time of year, they have apple orchards that are just full and full of delicious apples. Hop on a wagon that's driven around by a tractor, takes you out to the fields, rolling hills that just go on and on and on, full of apples. and found a tiny apple that was really cute. They also have a nursery, and that was more fun to look at. I walked around. There's some succulents, some perennials, not a lot left on the outside portion, but inside... I found something I have been looking for for many, many years. Do you see it? Do you see it? Of course. Add that up. Talk about that more later. To have some mangaves here that were looking pretty good. Threw a kangaroo paw fern on the cart, which I later decided I didn't need because I have so many, so I put it away. They had Christmas stuff out, which I was like, nope, not interested in that. And they had more house plants. The ones from Proven Winners, the like rare ish plants from Proven Winners. Hadn't seen those in person before, so thought I would show them and everybody else could have a nice look at them. And then we went to Ikea, where they also have plants. Fake, variegated plants. And of course, lots and lots of live plants. Live plants, baskets for the plants, pots for the plants, just interesting stuff to look at. I don't go there all that often because I just, I can't really stand that place. But it is fun to pop in like once or twice a year and see what they have going on. They had some of the most gorgeous golden pothos that I've seen in a long time. They were actually golden pothos. They're not just green leaves with a few specks on them. Oh, and these weren't clearance. I grabbed one of those. That was neat. And my brother-in-law and his family have a lot of land out in the countryside. It's like an hour and a half, two hours outside of St. Louis. So pop down there. Not for the best of reasons. Needed to get down there to deliver some news to a family member. But while we were there, they showed us around. Got to see the property. The neighbors who lives out there has some donkeys, which I fell in love with. They love donkeys. They're so cute. They remind me of Toby. All three of them were pretty friendly. A lot of fun. Beautiful hills and valleys and fields. Everything about it was just serene and beautiful. I loved being out there so, so much. Okay, now, all caught up. Was that enough chaos for everybody? I hope so. You're welcome. Oh, and got a lot of fall stuff. That was the whole reason I was at Greenscape. Go outside, look at everything I picked up from Greenscape and where else did I go? Eckert's and Ikea. Plants and garden things, some tropical plants, house plants, fall stuff. Go through it all. Tropical plants, house plants, all that fun stuff. Hi, baby. You waking up? It's a sleepy baby. So yeah, let's go outside, have a look at stuff I got from Greenscape. Got some houseplants, some tropicals, fall things, Ikea, and Eckert's. Lots of fun stuff to look at. We get, we get all caught up now. Okay. All right, gonna try things out from a different angle. Got the table set up over here directly on the edge of the pool. So let's hope the dog doesn't dog NATO his ass over here and knock things over into the water. Kind of pretty though, gotta admit, right? Looks nice. I'm gonna start off with what I got from Ikea. And this is one of the things. I think this is meant for chopping and storing vegetables. If you keep a Tupperware under here and you chop them up and slide them down in there. I got it so I can set things on top of it in videos. I did, I, okay, I didn't need this. Also for displaying bonsai, yeah, might look good. Maybe, I don't know. I also grabbed a whole bunch of these and I actually got them to store reverse osmosis water upstairs in the mini refrigerator. But the filters downstairs, this way you can have like bottles upstairs, useless plastic, you know, all that fun stuff. Years ago, I was watching a plant arena video and she had one of these or something similar to this. Maybe it was a wine bottle, I don't really remember but it was full of slow release fertilizer. And I was, saw that and I just kept thinking how freaking sophisticated. So sophisticated. I'm not that sophisticated. I'm only a little sophisticated. Yeah, look at that. It's a bottle full of slow release. Is this practical? No, no, absolutely not. But it looks cute. So yeah, it's not original. Took that right from Plant Arena. For the sake of videos, it makes sense. I go through so much slow release. This is not practical. Also, it's best to not keep the slow release in a container that's clear like this. So this will have to be something for inside the house, underneath the sink, that kind of application. And it just, it was, it was pointless and it looks cool. Not much else I can say about it other than that. Okay, I'm probably waiting for plants at this point. I brought a tri the, the tripod sitting right here. Took the effort to bring the tripod out and set it down so that there wouldn't be wobbly footage. This lens I'm using 
Didn't update about that, did I? I'll move on to plants here in just a second. There's a sneak peek. The lens, the broken lens, it's off to the lens doctor. So it's gonna be gone for a few months. Hopefully it can be fixed. In the meantime, I'm stuck using some lenses that aren't great. The picture quality should be fine. Video quality that is, but they don't have stabilization. So the tripod, I'm gonna have to get into the habit of using my tripods and gimbals. Here's a plant, it's, it's just a little pineapple. It's a cute little pineapple from Ikea. Ananas camosus, one of those little types. It doesn't have a specific name on the pot, so we just go with the ananas right there. I picked this one out because it has a whole bunch of growth coming out the sides. It's fun because once this one is finished fruiting and that dies off, cut that back, this middle one will start to rot out, cut it off, then have lots and lots of little babies to work with on the inside there. Might have a nice, cool looking cluster of pineapples to look at next year. Maybe, I don't know if I keep it alive over the winter. I got the thing to set the plants on. Didn't even set the plants on it. Okay, that's it for Ikea. So we'll go ahead and move on to Eckert's, the pumpkin, well, apple patch. And here's one of the plants that I picked up. This is the Anthurium silver bush. It says silver bush on here. I don't know if that's a typo. Only thinking that it might be a typo because when I Google that, there's basically nothing. Silver blush, there's information on silver blush, but silver bush, uh, no, nothing out there. I had to get it. It has so much sheen and sparkle inside of the foliage. It's like the entire thing has been dipped in glitter. It has a nice variegation on it. It was a decent sized plant. I do think is overpriced. This was $50, but that's how things are going to be when they're mass produced and they come out from proven winners, right? That's okay. I also grabbed a couple plants that had on clearance. These are, I keep wanting to say alocasia. I don't know why. There's nothing alocasia-ish about these. More of the proven winners house plants, you know, the leaf joy ones. This is a sun red philodendron, similar to a Prince of Orange or Macaulay's finale, but going to have more of a red leaf. The newest leaf will come out nice and red. You can see these are looking kind of sad. Not looking all that great, so I'm going to do some pruning on these and just cut off all that bad stuff that's on there. And really just about every single leaf they have is a bad leaf. Won't exactly be leaving much, but just enough. They have some edema on them. You see those spots on there? Not worried about that being a virus because there's not like crazy colors going on around those little dots that we're seeing on the leaves. Just looks like sunspots and edema. What that means is that at some point this plant got too much fertilizer, which ends up causing some rupture inside of the leaves. That's not the end of the world with these. Just keep them really well watered, get some new growth to push out of them and cut that bad stuff off. Okay, and then I also grabbed a very large orchid while I was there. My mic's flopping around basically in my mouth just and that was probably really loud. It's an oncidium. Don't know what type, it was just labeled Dancing Lady. I don't see Oncidiums of this size sold around here basically ever. So I nabbed it up. It's not the best looking, kind of desiccated, but this and those sun red, whatever those philodendrons were called, I already forgot the names of them. In the greenhouse, they had them sitting in full blazing sun, which was another reason that I wasn't really worried about that being a virus on that philodendron and figure it's just getting way too much light. But the appeal, that that brought to me is that I don't have to worry about transitioning this because I like to give my oncidiums a lot of light, but it can take a long time to break them in and get them used to the sun, acclimate them, that's the word, acclimate them to the sun. But they had already done that for me. Nice big plant. I wish it were labeled, but should get some fun flowers out of this over time. Dancing lady can mean a lot of things. That's just a common name you see with a lot of oncidiums. Okay, all right, I need to speed this up. The rest of the plants that I have out here, including these, don't want to be sitting out in the blazing sun. The sun is very strong today. Here we go, moving on to what I grabbed from Greenscape. It's down here, gotta point it down there. There's a ficus, a beautiful ficus. Ficus, Ficus salicifolia. Just a very nice ficus for bonsai. It's the only reason I got it. Don't see them around all that often, though I'm starting to see them a little bit more commonly. It has some nice bend in the branches for wiring, nice small leaves help give that miniaturized appearance without having to cut everything off and waiting for it to re-sprout. But they're still ficus, so in the long run, I'm probably gonna hate it. Finicky little plants, but I figured I'd grab one just because I want to do something with it when it comes to bonsai this fall or winter. And then a very, why, why keep messing? <laughs> it's 
what I meant when I said just a little sophisticated. What's the problem here? I think it's the depth of field on this lens. I'm not used to it and I'm doing everything looking through the camera. The Shiveriana ficus, I'll pull the tag up. This one's called Moonshine. Fairly common. One of the Elasticas, they have really fun variegated foliage on them, more of a mint green with splashes of darker green. The new foliage comes out that fun sort of caramelly orange color. Okay. Had to reset the neighbor's pool company showed up. So it just would have been lots of dudes roaming around in the background of all the shots making a good amount of noise. So over here now, it was fun to get to leave my little corner I've been hiding in all summer while filming videos, even if it was only for a few minutes. What was, which one was I talking about? Oh yeah, the Shiveriana. Beautiful foliage. Did I just say brutal? Beautiful foliage. It's just, I mean, it's a pretty plant. I don't know what else to say. Other than I liked it so much that I bought it twice, just so I would have a backup in case I kill one of them. Me and Elasticas I don't always get along. I like to water my plants and the Elasticas, they tend to not like the amount of water I give them. I know what I'm doing wrong. I know how they need to be grown. It's one of those plants where I have to remind myself to just leave it alone and it will flourish and be fine. Give it a drink every probably couple of weeks, make sure it has plenty of light, but they don't need to be drenched. Not that I drench any of the plants, but you know, thoroughly, heavily watered and doted after or on, doted on, doted after. They don't need to be smothered. So I just, I have to remember, don't smother them and they'll be fine. Just fun house plants. I love an elastica as long as I can remember to not drench them and just give them light waterings and plenty of light. They do fine and can live a really long time. Okay, and the last one you already know about, look at it, isn't it beautiful? It's just a gorgeous plant. Oh, it's a stunner. Philodendron, bilate, bilate, biliate, everybody, I hear so many different pronunciations. I don't really care how you say it. You know what I'm talking about. I'll hold the tag up so you can get a look at the name. There's the name right there and the price. Yes, I spent $60 on it. That is a pretty good price. I was just at that Aeroid show not too long ago and these were about 30 to 40 a pop and that was just in a plastic bag with their roots wrapped into some sphagnum moss. Once upon a time, y'all have heard me whenever I talk about a Gloriosum or a uh, McDowell, Dean McDowell, about how certain plants were around before the plant craze hit. Some of them that have been called rare. They used to be much more affordable. The Billy, that's one of them. Vine, of all places. I remember seeing this on their website when that website first came about and people were talking about how insanely expensive they were and you could get these in a 10 inch container. Great big, massive plants for like a hundred bucks. May have been 150, still, that was a phenomenal price. I'm talking huge, huge plants. So 60 for this one that has two in there, I figured that's not too bad. You can see have two very nice growths down on the inside. It's a well-established plant, lots of roots. And these are a very sturdy philodendron if you're looking to get into some of the more exotic-ish type philodendrons that have the really big fun foliage on them. I would give this one a try. I've heard great things about the Patricia from some of you who have grown it. I haven't grown that one. The Billy, I've grown. Very resilient. They're a fairly low fuss philodendron that have really beautiful orange interiors you can see in here. The vibrancy of that will vary from plant to plant and based on the amount of light that the plant's getting. But in general, the bigger these get, the more orange everything gets on the inside. And then you have the great big fun, nice long leaves. Just a fun philodendron. I'm glad to have another one. Look at even the back side of the foliage. Doesn't that look cool? Even from the back? That's a neat looking plant. And a sturdy plant, so what's not too love about that? Very much just into the fact that there were two in there instead of just one. Okay, and that's about it for the plants. Uh, well, actually not really. My front porch, things are pretty intense out there. Get to the front porch here in just a moment. I also grabbed some pottery. Seeing as how today is the first day of fall, yes, it's the day after the 20th. The day's the 21st, it started to rain, so everything that was shot upstairs was from yesterday. I figure may as well show off some beautiful winter containers. How do we like that? Aren't they fun? They're beautiful. This is for everybody who started putting out Halloween stuff in late July. 
but why did you do that? You shouldn't have done that. Uh, not really. It's just one of those things where I figure they'll sell out and I don't know how often I'm going to be back this time of year. This time of year, I'm focused more on getting the plants ready to move inside over shopping for new plants, house plants that is. And I liked the way these look. So these will be getting put away with my winter decor and I'll be popping these back out in November. Don't worry, I got something for fall. Look at this, isn't that cool? It's a little sugar skull planter with a lot of detail on it. When it comes to sugar skull stuff, taloe vera, alibre, hey, I don't think I'm saying alibre, hey, right, but they're the sort of things where I usually like to get them handcrafted and actually from the people who are making those things in their culture but it was just it was cute and it was there so i abandoned that and bought this i've never seen one as a container pot either el dia de los muertos is more religious but still fitting for the time of year and it's something i have a lot of fascination and respect behind so i'm glad to have that i don't know if i'll put a plant in it or not i just like the skull it's just a nice looking sugar skull that's that's why i got that fun stuff this one right here is probably my favorite of all of them lovability nice and orange Love orange. Orange is always fun. Hey, Terms, how you doing, baby? Still a few more things. I got another pot, a pot that I am so excited about. There's some backstory to this one. Here it is. Still on the cart, but you get the idea. It's a bubble planter. Bubble planters have long been one of my favorites. They were really popular back between, let's say 2017 to 2019, and then they just disappeared. And I know some of y'all been telling me that you've been seeing them at Lowe's. They, I just, it's not the same. The ones they have at the hardware store, the big box store, it's not the same. One, much smaller. Two, the colors, not really my thing. I like colors that are more saturated and vibrant. This is a decent sized pot to it. That's also an odd size pot, probably 14 to 16 inches across the top. I was so excited to have found this and based on the price of this, I would not be surprised if this is one of the ones left from 2019 or 2020. They were probably still making them and shipping them out at that time. But just says pot, bubble, wrap, blue, 15 inch. That's how big it is. That's a great price for a glazed ceramic container of this size. You know, though the price on everything has skyrocketed and I don't see containers this big for that amount of money very often. So I think that it's just one they had left. This is from Eckert's, that apple orchard pumpkin patch place that I was at with the fields and everything. That's where I got most of all my other bubble planters was from Eckert's and from Greenscape here in St. Louis. That's the only places I've seen them for sale. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of the OGs since they're not making them anymore. And again, that's just, it's not a price that I ever see on these containers anymore. So I'm really happy to have gotten another one. I've wanted a nice big one to go with my set. So now I have one and have fun jamming plants in there. And now everything else is off on the front porch. Go have a look at the front porch. The little pumpkin sighting on the way to the front porch. Hi, bite. How you doing? You going all the way up? One more. Are you going to make it to the top or are you just hanging out there? It doesn't matter. Turbo, you coming in? Come on, baby. Good boy. Come on. <laughs> Wait. I don't know if y'all could hear that. Being loud, being whiny. You're not getting cookies. You're not doing cookie parties. Oh, and I got this fun gray crate at Ikea and used it. That was my doorbell letting me know that I'm standing on my front porch. Use it to set up some fall display things. Got pumpkins from mostly Trader Joe's and Sam's Club. Didn't want to spend a lot on pumpkins. And then from Greenscape, have some fun mums with some cabbage and I need to water that one. Just some nice fall looking decor out here. I haven't planted anything up yet because I just tossed this together. Like I said, I had family in town. So just wanted it over here and out of the kitchen. All this stuff was in the kitchen for a few days. It was very crowded. But the crates and the pumpkins were all over the place. It was just nice to get them outside. Different colored mums in here. This is a red floral mum. Doesn't have a variety name on it. That one is amber. It's a yellow with some orange on the inside. And then these two right here are a trial mum. So they're not labeled. They're sent to the nursery as a trial. That's another, it's a floral mum. A fun, nice orange color on them with a gorgeous cabbage. Isn't that a beautiful cabbage? Looks great in these pumpkin wagons, which also are from Eckert's. One of these is from Eckert's. Can't remember, I've had it for a long time. And the other is from, uh, what is the name of that place? Only been there one time. Can't remember the name. It's uh, Kirkland's from many years ago. Don't know if you'll be able to find them still, but that's where those came from. Nice fall color. None of these are done. Like I said, they're just sort of staged right here. I need to fill them with gourds and some more things, but it's a nice start to some fall display type stuff. That's it. I won't do any more fall stuff. Not right now anyways. It looks good though, doesn't it? It could use some more 
filling, some gourds, something of the sorts, but already looking pretty nice. But yeah, that's everything. Thanks for hanging out through the chaos. You know, that's how it is. Had family in town, so that's what my main focus and priority was. Haven't really done anything out here in the last two weeks. You can see I've got some pruning to do. I have a lot of work to do leading up to moving the plants inside and final repots and all that fun stuff. Be kicking in the gear with all that sometime in the next couple of weeks. In the videos, that is, be getting some more things done out here. I hope y'all are doing well. Having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Isn't that a beautiful plant? Love the billies. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. Some of your favorite house plants is hibiscus pushed a flower out right on the inside of that lantern. You see it in there? That's fun. Don't know how it managed to do that. Oh, oh, no, no. Forgot. Need to update on the purpata. Purpurata. Alpinia purpurata. No, it hasn't bloomed yet. Definitely done some growing, but hasn't opened yet. They take a minute to get going. I don't know if we get to see flowers out of it this year or not. The clock's ticking. The company is coming to pick these up by October 15th, hopefully before then. So uh, it's uh, got to get moving. I'll probably lift that and store it. We don't need to talk. We'll talk about that later. All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. Bye.